We've all got scars, some on the outside and some on the inside, but we can't be defined by our scars. I've spoken with some extraordinary people about how they've become empowered by their scars. This is I've Got Scars, Baby. When my daughter sat me down Asking me these questions About how love works Yeah And why do people leave Without trying Trying first don't they know love's not supposed to hurt? Yeah. Oh, love's not supposed to hurt. Mm. Oh, love's not supposed. To her. Mm. When my teacher sat me down, yeah, he knew that I was helpless, and he knew the worst that people would try. To take my free freedom face Listen now America's supposed to work Yeah Oh Love's not supposed to hurt Doesn't matter what they say, yo. Oh, love's not supposed to hurt. Then I told her, I may not know the answers, I may not know the way. But I know that love answers and love will save the day. Yeah. Baby, nothing's random. And God don't make mistakes. Don't let go of those who love you. Before it's too late, yeah. And I know my days are numbered, yeah. And you may cry someday. And the one who helped me to you will help. You find your way, your way home. Listen, girl, find your way, your way home. Find your way. Your way home. So, 
so this is I've Got Scars, baby, where we 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 talk about scars. Mm. We're talking about, you know, dispelling the myth about having to hide behind them. Yeah. And uh, it's really important for us to just kind of talk it out. Sometimes you got to talk it out because yeah. I've truly believed that you can turn your scars into your superpower. Wow. Like your scars can truly, you know, assist you in your life's purpose. I like that. Yeah. And so I'm I'm so happy to have you here. I'm excited to be here. <laughs> Come on. I am speaking with an amazing, amazing artist. I mean, singer, songwriter, you are a worship leader. You are a, okay, an R&B juggernaut. Yes. yes. That's a whole thing right That's there. Thing I've right never there. said that yeah. about anyone. That's because I'm the juggernaut. You are. Yeah, yeah. And I see that, and, you're, and your name is Leon Timbo. And, That's me. And I mean, you've, I've seen you, I mean, you've sung with, you've performed with so many people. I'm honored. I'm honored. I've had, I've had an amazing run. Like, I want to, like, who are some people that you, you've worked with, performed oh, with? Oh, man. Um, I performed with uh, your, uh, I mentioned, um, and before we started here, Tyrese, uh, Babyface, uh, David Foster, uh, tank i've performed with um just some amazing major it's a good um, mm -hmm. amazing guy and yeah. um that i performed with um and and all i've i've established a, a good bit of relationship with i'm a relational guy you know mm -hmm. so we've had chances to kind of um kind of have what we call love circles and love circles are because i can't quite take them to the random most you know most churches we will rent out a hotel or be in someone's house and mm -hmm. Sometimes there's a full bar, whatever, uh, get over yourself. And so we'll sit down and we'll just kind of talk about life and yeah. talk about um, scars. I never really gave you that language, but I think that's exactly what we're doing because we yeah. realize that success in, in L.A. isn't isn't success in life. It's mm. just success on paper. And so I've been I've been on a lot of stages and I've. Um, re most recently, I was on the Black Music Honors, and uh, we, I, I had an opportunity to honor the great Bill Withers. Awesome. Um, and so that was a beautiful, beautiful moment for me. And so I've just had um, an amazing run, and now I am I am finding, you know, how to address those scars in my life. You know, you look at me, you don't necessarily see Yeah, because you look things, at you, right? and it's just like, okay, Together, the buffness, man. the juggernautness. Let's go. The, the you you know you ready to go you're powerful shoulders popping yes <laughs> like you got the traps come on trapping them come on let's go <laughs> yes so I mean like this clothespin in yes. my hand um it reminds me of my my upbringing uh, country boy Jacksonville Florida mm -hmm. Duval County and uh, I remember being in my grandmother's house with my cousins and um the street you know mm -hmm. street playing playing street ball and and just some of the wounds and the pains that you know, um, I experienced as a kid growing up and how those never leave you. Like those are just with you relationships, um, heartbreaks, yeah. um, being taken advantage of so all those things. So to be here at scars, yeah. um, you know, on the show means a lot to me. Well, I'm, I'm very happy that you're here and I wanted to definitely speak with a man and get a male's Ooh. perspective. It's a man code, so I, yeah, I don't want to be I like know. six nine, you know, <laughs> giving people. Love. <laughs> I want to oh, be, you Lord. know. But I, I wanted to do that because a lot of times, you know, you know, we we think about, you know, women. We want to make sure mm -hmm. that we hear them, hear us out. Yeah, which is incredibly important because yeah. we have our own set of scars and our own, you know, unique set of circumstances and things we've experienced. But men have a a different uh, oh, set yeah. of scars. Yeah, yeah. Men, men's scars. We substitute our scars with um, a lot of superficial. Mm. compensation overcompensation so it it is either in our language it is either in our loudness 
Mm. It is either in our style, um, it is in our boldness, it is in our muscles, it is in our self-confidence in quotes, right? Mm -hmm. It is in the the appearance and the brandability of our image yeah. that we hide those wounds. Um, and usually having to cover up those wounds for so long, it may take us decades before we come back to zero because we've had to superficially cover ourselves that and that probably drew some success now we got to live yeah and exist in that success so yeah it's a little different than women i mean we usually don't talk to each other about it yeah. we usually are the alpha males and we build our own kingdom you know mm -hmm. and so we 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 go and kill the deer we cook the deer we eat the deer and we die on the thrones that we create without addressing any of the pain in our lives. So, yeah, that's how men move. Wow. Wow, you said a mouthful right there. So, in your own experience, mm -hmm. because one of the things about you that I found so powerful is that when you perform, it comes from, it feels very pure. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you can just, you know, you can't lie like that. Mm. You know, like yeah. when I see yeah. you, it, it doesn't feel like an act. Yeah. It feels very honest. So what are some of those pain points and how have you dealt with some of those things? Well, I want to address that. I think at times you're getting the truth of my life and at times um, with no with no equaling of this example, because I consider this to be so much higher than what I do. But I liken what I do at times concerning love and relationship to Martin King and the I Have a Dream speech. Mm -hmm. If you recount the I Have a Dream speech, I believe that everyone in that audience believed that was his life. That was his dream. That was what he wanted. Um, and it was an idea. It was an idea mm -hmm. here that he recounted over and over and over again. So at times, as a as a as a far parallel, at times what you're hearing is the transparency of my life and the honesty of my life. And at other times you're hearing the idea that I know about love mm -hmm. and how I think we all fit in that immovable idea. Like love is like water. And you can add Kool-Aid to it, or you can add tea to it, or you can add some lemons and sugar to it. It's still water. It's just contaminated. It's mm -hmm. just diluted. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's how we've addressed love. Because it's liquid, we say it's love, but we've added so many contaminants that it doesn't produce what love produces. Yeah. It doesn't give us what love gives us. And so that's what you hear from me. You just hear me addressing the contaminants and me distinguishing that from what love really is, even if I'm, I've not grown to the place where I personally experience it. So love's not supposed to hurt. Yeah, man. Okay, so but but even before we get into that, I, okay. we're about to get into it. But one of the reasons I wanted you on this show, I remember when I first met you, mm -hmm. we were actually on a show together. Yep. Now here's the funny part: like we're on uh -oh. a show together back at the J spot yeah, in Inglewood, yeah, in and it's a, it's a comedy club, mm -hmm. but they actually had live music there and performers there. Yep. And so I was on the show and I, you, I think you headlined it. Mm -hmm. But all I have to say is I was just sitting in the audience after I performed. I was sitting in the audience and I was just like, who is this guy? <laughs> oh, my. Come on. I did. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's because, and it, you were just sitting. You're sitting playing the guitar. But it wasn't a, like you didn't move a whole bunch. You weren't like, you know, you weren't like getting it and, you know, like doing all these moves. It was just you and the guitar and your voice. But it hmm. but it was something behind that voice. It was very powerful in the songs. It as a as a songwriter myself, like you you don't always hear a lot of people sharing stories yeah. in their songs and their music sometimes, you know, 
but they don't get all they don't always get deep with mm-hmm. it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like you get deep and you I, go I had there. To choose. I had to choose early on the type of artist I was going to be. And um either either you can choose to be an artist that allows people to walk through this journey called life, or you can choose to be an escape artist. You can Mm. choose to be the kind of artist that makes people forget about their lives. Mm -hmm. And so early on, I just, um, I chose to be the kind of artist to kind of introspect through what life is, how life moves, um, as I'm knocking the mic, uh, microphone. Um, but, but I'm that guy. I'm, I I chose to do it that way because I had a lot to say and I had, I've seen a lot Mm -hmm. and pain has a way of, um, needing to be exercised out. Like Mm -hmm. you almost have to action your pain away. You almost have to, you have to work with it and, and normalize it and then make it a part of your thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't face it and, massage it and process it then it's just going to stick out there and so what you saw was me exercising my pain on stage with people that that I don't know but it gave me a freedom to kind of showcase the strength in those moments even if it's love or God or pain or she let me go or I screwed up or whatever it is, I'm able to exercise it and normalize it for myself. Well, I felt it. Thank you. And that's why you stuck out in my head Hmm. just for a long time, like for like probably even years, like, you know, and I'm, and I don't say that just because you're here. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, it's a lot of music out there because we didn't even, like, I don't think you knew I was there. I don't think we met that night. No, we mm-hmm. didn't even meet that mm-hmm. night. We met later on, and I just had to tell you because you. I never forgot you. So I just, I'm glad that you said what you said mm. because there are different artists, you know, people that help you kind of navigate through that, and they're just honest. And then, yeah, the escape artist. And I don't shoot and it's, the and it's escape not bad. artist. It's, it's just not bad. when I'm ready to forget it all, you yeah, know, there's you need some that. artists that play and i'm gone yeah but but at the same time you know you kind of have it's like you just kind of have to be authentic to Mm. who you are yeah and so i just appreciate that so that's one of the reasons uh i I wanted to have you on the show is because i know that has to come from a place Mm. it comes from a place and this is we're talking about part of this is talking about men's emotions Mm. ha because sometimes, especially as a woman, we don't know mm. that men have emotions like that. Like, and society doesn't always, you know, speak about it. Yeah, it's man code. It's a yeah. man code. Yeah, idea. And, and I would imagine men are told to kind of like, yo, Hold a man suck code. it up, yeah, deal chill with out. It. Yeah, and it comes out in other ways that mm. may not be the most constructive. Yeah. Sometimes. I mean, but that's true Most for anybody. Times. Most, Most times. times. Yeah. And so that's true for anybody. So before I even go there, I just have to like you just <sighs> love's not supposed to hurt. Yeah. yeah. Like so powerful. Mm-hmm. And you covered subjects. It yeah. wasn't just, you know, just on the personal side Mm. and the familial like the family side it was a it was it it was some political and other elements in there as well like where did that come from well i i've uh i've i'm fortunate enough to have been a part of the school of tyrese gibson the school of kenneth edmonds babyface Mm, and i've done i've done some study um, kind of the Barry Gordy, Smokey Robinson conversations, you know, Barry Gordy being a songwriter himself. My point is this. Um, when when you write a song, um, the legends say that a song has to have a beginning, a middle, and an end, and it has to take you somewhere, and the ending needs to be conclusive. And if it's not conclusive, then your song is selfish mm-hmm. because only you 
understand what it means. And you don't have to be so specific if you don't want to, but it does have to give a person the opportunity to take that journey with you. Yeah. So love's not supposed to hurt came from a, a lot of thoughts and a lot of pain. Um, I've had relationship pain for a long time. And um, I, I'll be general enough to say that articulate, articulating that relationship pain to your kids is is the hardest thing to do. It is, um, it, it, it is and has been the hardest thing for me to ever do. And so I found myself um, kind of regurgitating those conversations and, and being asked questions that I didn't have the answer to. But it started the process of healing and, you know, looking at it for what it was. Well, my daughter simply said, um, I feel your love for me. But why is it that people don't choose to stay with each other? Why is there an expiration on love? When did love, when did love have an expiration date, Dad? Mm. And so as a father of a daughter, um, it is a hard question to ask when you're unraveling your own relationship um, therapy, your own relationship processing um and and that in, that involves some confession and then it doesn't just start there it begins at the home but then it expands and um to to the culture of the nation and the environment around you you know so before mm-hmm. we get to that part though Dick. when we're talking about the relation the relationships mm-hmm. and you've had certain difficulties mm-hmm. and was your daughter speaking with regard to her mother, was it? A, it was. It, it was. It was. A, it was specifically in regards to her mother. Yes, mm-hmm. and that is, you know, me being an artist, me traveling. You know, you, you see a lot of, um, women interaction, a lot of um, um, smiles and hugs and kisses and um, DMs. You know, my daughters. Um, at times they've even been a part of my business. And so they've seen, yo, I'm sitting right here and you're like hugging my dad and squeezing his booty. You know, that's a bit much, ma'am. So this, mm. where does that line happen? You know, and the lady that squeezes the booty buys 10, 10 pieces of product. So it's yeah. like, okay, dad, where does this land? Yeah. Because I want to do something like this, but I don't, nobody's kind of giving us the blueprint as to how to, live and love authentically in this space of entertainment, in this space of being somebody's idea mm. um, of perfection on stage, right? Yeah. And so because people only know what they hear, they tend to build a world of, around that only when I'm multidimensional and my yeah. pain is as prevalent as my you know, success yeah. or, or, or beauty, as, as some might say. So that was very personal. It begun there. And um, it's it's a saga still being written, you know. Yeah. Mm. So I'm glad that you, you said that because I can only imagine. I mean, I'm a performer as well. And so that's one of those things yeah. where, yeah, you can do something on stage. And one of my things was just... When I'm on stage, there's a, a level of confidence that just comes out stuff. You know, it's Absolutely. like God just flows through you. Yeah. But then off stage, it's spe- like I was just so timid and like scared of everything. Yeah. Yeah. But I look like a whole other person on stage. But I would imagine because for me, you want someone to love you and to care for you. Mm-hmm for who you are yeah. not just your persona on stage or that part of you that is just you moving in your gifts absolutely and people think they do <laughs> they think you know i've heard all your albums and all your songs and so i got you i know mm. exactly who you are um my name's michelle nice mm. to meet you you know type mm-hmm. deal um when when you you don't i think a, a, an amazing artist somebody I've had the honor of walking with um, out of your hometown, mm-hmm. um, he he stated, I'm going give, I'm to give him a plug, but I want to make sure I remember one of the albums, so I don't want to just give him a shameless plug. Um, but Al Bettis said, um, when I write a song and when I'm singing a song, it is like uh, a star that you see, 
It is like a star that's in the sky. And you see that star. By the time you see the star, the place where the star was, it's no longer there. Mm -hmm. And his Mm -hmm. point was, as an artist, when I'm singing my song to you, it's usually a star that you're seeing that I'm no longer in that place place, or experiencing that thing. And a lot of people can get that mistaken, you know, um, because they're playing it over and over and over again. Mm Mm-hmm. But you've either grown from it or you hate it, you know, or mm-hmm. you, you, you're somewhere else different. And simply because of that principle alone, I mean, there's multiple more, but just because of that principle, a person, unless they know you, they don't know you. You know, they only yeah. know the piece of you that you unravel at that moment. And um, just seeing that as a daughter, seeing your dad experience that, I didn't realize because I've been doing this so long, yeah. I didn't realize that those rhythms created a certain upbringing for them that as, you know, you have to deal with that as well. So I have to, I have Come to on. ask. I have to. Can, we I, can we go there? I don't know. I to... mean, you just let me know if Sheesh. we can't go there. I, but Cut I know. The tape. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but... That then that leads me to ask, do you want that? Because there's an element of, I, I believe everybody has a certain level of mystery. You can move in that as an artist. There's a, you know, I was talking to um, a great friend of mine, Danielle. She's an awesome comedian. And we talked about comedians and a lot of times, hmm. you know, you're laughing at your pain. Like yeah, that's, sure, you sure. know, like... And so that's what you do. You get on stage, you talk about some things that have happened to you in your life. Mm -hmm. And you can do that all the time. You can you can get on stage seven days a week. Yeah. Yeah. And you can have a you can have a a great time for the 10, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, maybe an hour that you're you're up up there. there, Right. But at the end of the day, you're still having to come back home to yourself and dealing with yourself. And sometimes people don't understand that you still have to heal that pain. Most people, you yeah, know? most times people don't understand it. But you, 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 your, your question was. Is, is do you want, because there's an element uh-oh. of like, uh-oh. okay, yeah, you don't really know me. You've heard my music. I mm-hmm. know that you mm-hmm. feel touched by what I do. But you don't really know me, that mm-hmm. Michelle that you were referring to. Yeah, yeah. Like, Michelle's like, yeah, I, le- I heard all your songs and so on and so forth, blah, 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 blah. You're like, you don't know me, Michelle. You don't know me. But do you want her to know you? Do you want anyone to know you? You know, I, I think that goes back to um, it's, it's, it's introspective first. I think I've I've become this person because my upbringing, m- most entertainers, were either loners or they were invisible or they were not seen. You don't, you don't learn a skill. Mm. You don't spend hours and hours alone learning a skill unless your social life was really busted. Yeah. I don't know many jocks (laughs) that have those. (laughs) I learned this alone in the closet by myself. I mean, let's just be honest, like respectfully, John Mayer is corny. I mean, he's he's sexy and he's beautiful and he's all those things on stage, but you strip that cape away and you're like, yo, yo, you, you mm. good? You need a friend? Me, I'm like, you take those things away from me. It's like, you, you good? You, yes. you want to go? You know? You, and so that's that thing is. Yes. So me learning me mm-hmm. and being okay with who I am outside of that. Everybody chooses to take that person on at different stages of their life. Mm. Some people may wait until later in life because they enjoy the view people see of them, right? Yeah. And the people that live with them suffer yes. because they're their truest selves on stage and they're transitioning and dealing with people until they get back to stage. So when you say the real you, yeah. for a lot of entertainers, the real of them is on stage. Mm. And they're just tolerating and self-medicating off stage yes. until they get to enough life to say, okay, I kind of want to discover the person that doesn't need an applause. That's huge. That ain't something people just wake up to. Not if money's popping, mm-hmm. not if popularity's popping, you know? Yeah. Um, and so to answer your question, do I want Michelle to know me? I don't know me. 
I don't know the me I want Michelle to know yet. Mm. You know, I realize I don't know that guy. Okay. I can look back and I can kind of address some of the weaknesses and some of the issues and some of the inconsistencies of my life and say, yo, you're screwed up. You need to deal with that. But living day to day, um, you don't rush to want to give Michelle the raw part of you, the the mm. other part. Like, Michelle, your breath stinking. I really can't stand when people have you know bad breath yeah. and you're just like yo but your song is good that's cool but i can't talk to you right now i mean that's, that's stupid and simple but that's it can be that raw it can yeah. be that no you deal with it and you say um thank you for loving my music give me the hug and you live in that space and you keep it moving mm -hmm. you, yeah you're a circus monkey um, but you're an effective circus monkey. <laughs> you know, people mm -hmm. enjoy your entertainment and you move on. Yeah. That's why my faith is so important to me because what I do know, mm -hmm. whether I'm the R&B juggernaut, as you so proclaim. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Or, or, or um, whether I'm leading worship, I realize mm -hmm. that there is, there is an entity that understands me clearly, understands more of me than I understand of myself. That reality saves my, my sanity okay. because there therein lies the love that I know no one else can give me. Mm -hmm. Eventually, I'll give someone permission to. But in the meanwhile, I, I understand that it exists and I'm cared for and loved for by my faith in that way. And mm -hmm. that's what that's what moves me in, in this whole thing. I know I'm screwed up. You know, I know that when I sing a song to people, it's through somebody else's pain and mm -hmm. one side of me. But I know I'm screwed up and I'm willing to let you know I'm screwed up. Not for you to get closer, but for you to know that it's OK to be screwed up and walk through your pain. So, yeah, I hope I answered your question. First of all, yeah. I just want to say thank you for your transparency because people don't they don't approach life mm -hmm. like that. And, you know, especially I would imagine, you know, when you're the limelight makes you look glorious amazing. and glamorous and everything is amazing. Mm. But it's it's some dark stuff. But like one of just my own uh, experience and walking through my own scars mm. and learning to look at myself like, I don't know if you know this, but a part of my journey with regard to my scars, I don't know if I, if I told you, but six surgeries, I burned it a year and a half, six surgeries between the ages of two and 16, didn't look at myself in the mirror until I was 25. And the looking at myself in the mirror for the first time, mm. like getting to that point of looking at myself, mm. Cause I got used to hiding. I got sure. used to, you know, just getting out of the shower, bypassing the mirror, putting on my PJs, and then I go brush my teeth. Yeah. Then I yeah. go look in in whatever I need to do. And so I got used to the hiding element. Wow. And the hardest part for me was actually taking that step and seeing how important it was for me to actually look in the mirror. Mm. But this was the revelation I had because I would always pray. I would ask God like. Like, why, you know, why do I have these scars? Why did this happen? Why, you know, I just had all the whys. Yeah. And not, I mean, this is for years. And then when I was 25, I finally felt in my spirit that God said, Audra, everybody has scars. Mm. Some on the outside and some on the inside. And that was the thing that actually it, it, it gave me a lot of comfort mm -hmm. because I was like, oh, I'm not alone in this. Mm -hmm. I'm not alone. And then because I and one of one of my things, too, is I always like I grew up. People would ask me for advice and things like that. And I love to encourage people cool. like that yeah. was a part of just just me. And, and I always said, you know, with music, I want to encourage people, I want to encourage the world and all that, you know. Yeah. And. And at that moment when I had my the revelation that's when I felt like I was like okay so um how you gonna encourage people if you don't even look at yourself in the mirror wow I was yeah, like yeah, oh yeah. uh, I was yeah. like oh me oh touche God Am I, I see one? what you're saying like yeah. okay you know I couldn't even say I couldn't even argue with that no. so my what I say all that to say that that element 
of actually doing the healing and doing the work, doing the stuff that is going to get you to a space of being able to be on stage and be that person Mm -hmm. and then be off stage and be that person. Mm -hmm. And those two people connect, they shake hands and so on, you know, because it took me six months to even look at myself without cringing Mm -hmm. in the mirror, like literally I, I, but I had to do it every day. It was something. It it was not an easy thing, but it was very much well worth it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So with that, just curious, is that something that you think about? Do you feel like, because a lot of times people, you know, comedians will say, well, you know, if I went to therapy and so on and so forth and I actually got healing, I may not be funny anymore. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, you right, might right, be right. like, yo, this might mess up my art. Like, Do you understand how this brokenness yeah. is serving me? How about you be healed and be broke? Good. Enjoy that. Enjoy that. Yeah. So I'm just, you know, like, I can understand it. That might be like, yo, uh, this might shift some things. Does that ever cross your mind? Um, You know, I'm no. I've never... Yo, like, I don't even know if I want to finish this interview right now because I don't want to. I need, I need my paper. Um, to, I need my pain to be pop, <laughs> popping. So I'm, I'm done here. I'm, <laughs> yo, I, I never thought about it, but yeah, who I am has a lot to do with the mayhem in my life. Yeah. Like, and so, you know, we are so quick sometimes to get to the finish of a thing, mm-hmm. and we. You know, we don't realize that the beauty isn't getting to the finish. The beauty is acknowledging the journey and yes. knowing that the journey is rocking and moving and you're growing in certain areas. And that's a hard thing because when you grow in a certain area, then you now have accountability to not do the bull you did before to get through and get by. So. Yeah. That's that's not something I'm like I'm there's certain things I don't want to give up. Like no, like give me what I want because it gets me through. Mm-hmm. Um and so in that in, in me being honest with myself about that, I think I can help people who lie about it. It's mm-hmm. like, okay, hold on. Okay, I get it, but mm-hmm. you're not going to give language to why you okay right here. You're not going to, like, I'm not that guy. I'm, yeah. I'm going to let you know I'm screwed up, and I'm going to let you know I got faith. Jesus, Jesus, he loves me, <laughs> and I'm good. Yeshua is on my side, and I'm on his side, mm-hmm. and get over yourself. But by the same time, I'm not going to give you my BS on a nice, pretty silver platter and say, you know, my life is good. It's all good. And I don't know if I want to give up some of that stuff right now. I mean, that's probably the truest thing I ever said. Mm. And I might cry when I leave here. So what? I'm going to cry. But (laughs) that's something because my art is a product of my pain and Mm -hmm. a product of me realizing other people's pain. Yeah. And the day I the day I don't have that tapping Mm -hmm. is the day I lose the thing that makes me who I am now. Ouch. Just a challenge. I don't know if I like I said that. I I, I suck. I'm so glad that you're honest because that's like that. that's so that's what so many people feel. Go ahead. Am I, I don't I know don't... if I like. I don't know if I like that I said that. Like it's it sucks. Um, it's a lot easier to give the illusion that you are somewhere you're not, but yeah. to have the conversation and say I am because I'm wrong. Or I am because I hide. I am yes. because I am dealing with all of this inconsistency. Yes. That's, that's, uh, that's, this is called, that's why this is I've got scars, baby. Yeah. yeah. Because it's the truth. It's the baby part that really. The reason I say baby. 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 With the exclamation point. But here, let me tell you why I say that. I say I've got scars, baby. Mm-hmm. One is the lyric in my song, Scars. True. But. The concept of I got I've got scars a baby is the baby is the you know what? I got this. I've had these things that have happened to me. Yeah. I have this pain and I'm not going to apologize for it. I'm no longer going to hide right. from it, hide it from you or whatever. Like this is just, this is a part of my life. But now my mm. question is, what do I want to do with it? How can it serve me? And for 
And to be honest, your pain has served you very well. Yeah, it's pretty. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. I think, honestly, you don't get to a space because in, in the industry, your pain can reward you mm-hmm. monetarily That's with true. a lot of, you know, acclaim and all of that. But you're going to, you know, everybody gets to a point where they're like, you know what? My priorities have shifted. Yeah. Yeah. And it's no longer about the acclaim. It's no longer about the amount of money. It's about, I want to have something different. Like, I want to have the stuff that I haven't had yet. Yeah. Like, you know, maybe that's a relationship. Maybe yeah. that's, you know, something deeper in those areas, something that you just haven't explored yet. Because I, you know, overall, I feel like we're all growing and expanding. Like, that's just a part of human nature. It's a part of life, you yeah. know? Yeah. And so, it can shift. So, but you have to be honest, like you're, like you're being now with where you are at yeah. the moment and it's okay. And it's okay. But I think that's real though. That to me, I think that's very brave to say that. And you know, cause some people might be like, you know what? Um, being a player is working for me right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not a player. Not saying do you not, are a player. Not I'm not that. saying that's it. Not. Just, I just wanted to make sure you know, I people, am a sexy R&B juggernaut, <laughs> but I am not a player. I don't even know what that means. See, exactly. I like PlayStation. See? Okay. okay. There you go. So, <laughs> it, I think that's it because you have some people that's just like, yo, this lifestyle is working for There's me. There's no successful person that I've ever met, none hmm. that I've ever met whose life is together. Hmm. I'm I'm that's just my truth. Um and 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 because of the experiences I've had, I am persuaded that um that kind of success comes with that price of pain. Mm. And the mismanagement of it mm. um is probably a key to the sustaining of it. Like if reality is this, people may not want to hear this, but the reality is this to be happy. Something has to give. You have to get to a place where in terms of money, you've gotten enough. And then you have to give your energy to family Mm -hmm. and to building. Um, Success doesn't sound like that. Success is, you building, that's cool, but this million dollar contract is on the table. What you gonna do? Mm-hmm. You need to tell your kids, you need to tell your people, I see you in six months. You know, that's what success does. And if you didn't already have inconsistent, pain filled people get into that place, they wouldn't they wouldn't even mm-hmm. accept that. But because crap has you know, that's just a part. We we take the success route over the whole route over being whole hmm. and that's that's the truth oh. that's the reality of it i mean wow oprah has bad days yeah um she may have more bad days than you would think she would have but because she's successful we disregard what lonely feels like mm because she has super soul Sundays and because she's got this and that we think, you know, uh, Tom Cruise is popping. He's Scientologist. He's, he's got his mind together. You know, we, we, we thought Robin Williams had it together. We thought these guys knew at least the ceiling from the floor. Yeah. But in reality, we don't. And I say, we, yeah. we don't until we acknowledge the fact that there has to be a limit to this lane in our lives so that we can then take our energy and put it into things that are, um, that are stronger. Most successful people. I think about Richard Pryor. I think about Quincy Jones. I think about, um, any, any, any successful person. There's been a lot of casualties and there's been a lot of carnage in terms of Mm -hmm. people, People in terms of relational capital. Yes. You've got currency and capital, but you've risked relationship capital because you can only do one thing one at, at a time. time. Yeah. So what you're what I'm hearing is that basically at the end of the day, you have to choose. Mm-hmm. You have to either choose to have this level of success and explore that 
mm-hmm. and maximize it and do your thing and, and take, keep going take, and, and t- keep yeah. going, going, going. Yeah. Or you choose family, you choose the connection, you choose the heart elements. Yeah. Uh, you don't feel like they can coexist in any way? I feel like the limit, Mm -hmm. as long as there is a, I use the term expiration, as long as you know when enough is enough, Mm -hmm. unless you create boundaries to say, I'll do this, I'll do this, but I will not do this, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. No matter what the cost, no matter what it brings, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to, even if I have to live less, Mm -hmm. even if I have to be seen less, these are hard hard things to ask a person full of pain and the need to be recognized to do it's hard to come to that conclusion so when you say can they both exist yeah with boundaries but we are the boundless yeah people in entertainment we don't have boundaries not at large it's not something we discuss we bob marley said it best said the problem with numbers is that it never ends so neither mm-hmm. does our desire for more of them. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, that's the truth. And that makes sense. Yeah. But when do we tap into, because you said that when you're, when you're broken and you've gone through some things, you need that validation at the end of the sure day. So when do we tap into ourselves and our needs and say, well, here's the thing. I can do this for a hundred years and never get enough validation. Never get enough, right. When do we So come when to do we actually get to that point and start to validate ourselves? It's never a cookie cut because your your pain, it's like this clothes clothespin. Your pain has so many triggers. So many triggers. There's like people of color for one. Mm-hmm. I, I'm gonna make a hard statement. I've been dropping names and everything, so forgive me. I don't know nothing about nobody. So just take take it with a grain of salt. But I will I will say a belief that I have because I've I've experienced this on on a lot of in a lot of um, polls mm-hmm. in terms of people of color. There is a triggered tragedy uh, when it comes to sexual misconduct and being taken advantage of sexually. Now I'm just gonna breeze over it because I know this is not supposed to be that hard and that deep, and so you might want to get some coffee or tea. But and because of that trigger. Mm-hmm which has a lot to do with the conditions that this country presented um, as a whole. But let's just get to the core. Because of those triggers, now you have an opportunity to be in the middle of a stage, Mm -hmm. appreciated, Mm -hmm. um, seen with value. Mm -hmm. When you've been triggered to not be respected, not be seen, to feel invisible. Mm-hmm. And when you were visible, you were taken advantage of. And so you take all of that pain and you get on stage and you work a guitar or you work mic or you work your clever. And now you have appreciation. Yeah. All right. But it's still imbalanced because you never really deal with what produced that. Yeah. The truth is, this had nothing to do with you as a kid. This had mm-hmm. everything to do with the people yes, that, that were around. It was all about them. Yeah. But until you do that, this substitution of accolade, you're going to continue to pursue it as a fake substitution in your life. So mm-hmm. most people will never get to the place and say, OK, I've had enough of that. I'm good on that. Because the pain is perpetual. Because the, it, it it's, perpetuates. It's, yeah, period. it's. And that was an example. But yeah. it's, it's across the board in all cultures. Yeah. That pain, because we never deal with why that happened to us. Yes. Um, Then we can never deal with the fact that this is a substitute for that. Yes. And this has to have an end. And so I'm, oh gosh, I'm so glad that you said that because that is right there saying you got to face the mirror. You got You have to. That's exactly what it is. You have to face the mirror. You have to look at it and say, hey, yeah, they like me. They love me. They clap for me. All of that. But it, it, like, am I for real feeling better? Am I really, is it healing me? Mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's a Band-Aid over a bullet wound. Yeah. And eventually, like you just mentioned, unfortunately, Robin Williams, like, eventually... It's going to catch up with you. Mm-hmm. It's wow. inevitable. It's, it is inevitable. And everybody's consequence isn't that detrimental. Mm-hmm. But uh, L.A. is full of 
successful people who live on empty. Mm. It is full of successful people who live needing to be filled every single day. And eventually that feeling doesn't happen. And so they do something else extra to get it. And next thing you know, what's inside of them begins to show up on the outside. Mm. And the has mm. the level of has been that it's never been healed because yeah. it's never been handled. Yeah. They live with. So when do they realize it? Most times way too late. When do we realize it? Yeah. Most times way too late. Wow. Wow. Okay. So that was just really powerful. So going back to your song. There's an element of you, the second verse of your song where you talk about what your teacher said to you. Yeah. And you're talking about how you're to show up in the world yeah. and the scars in the country, from the country, sure. and from society sure. and so forth. Like as a man, here's here's the interesting part about you. Like looking at you, you are this... You know, you'll be considered a big strapping man. Juggernaut. The juggernaut. I don't know. I, just I don't, I don't know. That. It's like, random. It's very random, but I know you love it. So you are that. Mm -hmm. And to from that vessel, I would imagine you show up places and people don't expect you to to croon the way you do mm, or have they a don't expect for yeah. you to have a guitar they don't expect yeah. for you to necessarily have this you know this touching you know engaging part to you yeah they you know they see you and it's like you know i would imagine you can be considered intimidating yeah. so how does that feel like um i i share this with my oldest daughter um my oldest daughter is, um, and and she's free with me saying this. She's uh, she's gay, and she's an amazing violinist. Now I make that statement on purpose, and it's something I experienced all my life. I realized that in most cultures that don't see me or know me, when I walk into a room, intimidation happens. Right. Um. No matter how nice I am, no matter how I try to lower my little shoulders, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You know, you're a monster, right? Mm -hmm. And so until I pick up the guitar, mm. when I pick up the guitar, everybody head lifts and I become everybody's friend, right? And I, I, I saw that in my life, but it wasn't until my daughter said to me that I know when I walk into rooms, people are looking at me weird. And when I tell them that I practice Tchaikovsky and that Bach is my favorite composer and I begin to play, the heads lift and the judgments change. That's wow. how we show up in the world. Wow. And so you got people with those pains yeah. that then create this, this, this acceptable, palatable view of themselves that people can accept. And for, if you live in that place forever, in, instead of getting to the place where you say, it doesn't matter what you think of me, which is not easy to get to. Mm -hmm. It's easy for me to say than it is for me to do. But until you accept that what they see in me isn't my problem, it's their problem. And I shouldn't define myself by their problem. Yes. Until you get to that place, which is never easy to get to. Yeah. You'll never realize where it begins, where it ends, and where your boundaries where should you, be. And yeah. it perpetuates generationally as well oh. if you don't know to address it. God. Like, I'm so happy you mentioned that because I can only imagine what yeah. that does to a person's self-esteem. Yeah. Because you just, you know, you're just a spirit in a body walking around the world and you just want to be loved. Yeah. You just want to feel connection. And it's like, whoa, excuse me. Who do you think you are? Right. And you're not called, you're not there for harm. No. You're just there to experience life like everybody like else. Everybody else. And and now you you're like a pariah until you do something that they deem acceptable. I couldn't have said it better myself. Wow. That's a huge 
scar. So how can you get to the scar if you have a perfect alibi for not having to deal with it? Mm. How can you get to it? Mm. So people, people, people aren't going to show up to deal with scars. Mm. They'll show up to better themselves, you know. Yeah. They'll show up to let me get a better me, but they're not going to show up to say, you know what? If you, if you see that part of you, and introduce yourself to the best version of yourself, you know what? You'll live a better life. Or does that mean more money? Does that mean more people? Does that mean more attention? No, it means you'll enjoy life better. Okay, okay. How do you quantify that though? Um. Do you mean so? If you don't have a way of quantifying it yeah. at large you're going to get an immediate rejection because people don't see themselves with value they only see what they do i am what i do i am what i produce so you said deal with your scar because you're worth it nobody, that falls nobody on deaf hit, ears. It's no, there's no there's no appetite for for that line wow at our in our culture at large there's no appetite for Become a better you because you need to be a better you. There's only because you appetite. deserve it. Because you deserve it. No. No, that it it doesn't even really register. The no. whole I am that I am does not. The purest part of who we are never registers to the distracted pieces that we give the world. No. Wow. Wow. And that's hard to to hear, but I get it. Because we're just taught to do. And I when I when I think about when I think about things from a spiritual perspective, I always felt like in church you're taught to love God, mm -hmm. love other people. Mm -hmm. But you're never really taught to love yourself. No. Because you're hearing it from people that don't love themselves. How do you, as a worship leader, yeah. how do you reconcile that? Because at the end of the day, you're ushering people into an energy of love mm -hmm. for God. I don't have to. Um, there's, that's the only place I don't have to reconcile. All I have to do is create an opportunity for them to see a father that loves them in spite of. And he does the, the work. Like I'm most freed in that situation. Mm -hmm. God isn't somewhere wondering if like if we believe in him, right? Mm -hmm. He's not somewhere wondering what we're gonna do next. He's not like, oh my God, you made that mistake. I wonder what you're gonna do tomorrow. He's the kind of father that knows all that we are, has already decided to love us, and it's us redeeming our own understanding to the fact that he does already love us. So my role yeah. is in trying to push the distractions so that he can do what I could never do. So that that's pretty easy mm -hmm. because I don't have a part in that. I only get out the way and create language for that to happen. Yeah. And that's why the spiritual is so important. If we, it would be naive of us if we see, if we see Bluetooth and Wi-Fi even though we can't see it with our eyes, we know that it exists. Mm -hmm. It is naive of us to think that our spirits don't have a resting place mm -hmm. and does not communicate with, with, with the spiritual. Mm -hmm. We would be naive to think that. And therein lies the healing because to know that you're accepted mm -hmm. and loved yes. regardless of what you do, if you never did anything else, yeah. the idea of that redeems a person's life even if they're not at the place where they're ready to feel worthy yeah. the process of being loved until you're worthy is something that only god holds and so it's pretty easy there okay and that and that makes that makes a lot of sense I, and I, because i feel like in my music and what i'm looking to do is to speak to the person speak to the spirit of the person and yeah. remind them of their awesomeness remind them of their beauty of their yeah. divinity mm. you know i just i think that's just incredibly important and it's not so much i guess it's not so much when i see it like oh everything is just going up right right it's like okay well god is also within yeah and we can't forget that element and I feel like we forget that element. Oh, that, that is the element. That is the element. Yeah, this this idea of up 
is only it's it's elementary. The reality is there there the up is within. Mm-hmm. Um, we just that's just our way to understand, understand it. yeah. that it's higher than where we are. Yes. But the idea, the yes. truth, the, the 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 collegiate understanding of that statement mm-hmm. is he's there. When you realize he's there, then you're going to become more like what he's what he. Already yes. Is. Yeah. Now that. Thank you. Packaging that. I just feel like. Put it, and I say package, not in like okay. a weird way, but I mean it as in like getting people to fully get that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I that was my struggle. Yeah. Like personally, from a spiritual perspective, like I, my scars and me dealing with my scars and me finding healing and acceptance and embracing them, I had to understand, you know, how I saw God yeah. was that I saw God is very far from me up in the sky. And I was down here like, okay, I just want to be, I just want to do everything you want me to do. I just want, you know, I want, cause I, I want to do everything perfect. I want you yeah. to love me. Yeah. And it's not until I realized that sweetheart, I love you already. Yeah. It is already like, I couldn't love you more. If I, if I could love you more than <laughs> I wouldn't be God, yeah, basically, yeah. you know, I'm there. It's, like it's, it's all it, it is yeah. the isness, yeah. like the I am that I am. And so having someone to understand that and see that within themselves, I think that is the most important element. It's the key to that life. is the key. And when you see that, when you understand that, then you're not needing all of this stuff from the world, from the outside to fill you up and to make you into something or somebody. That you're not. And all of that exists in the same person. Our previous conversation, me having a lot of crap I don't want to deal with, the divinity of who I am, Mm -hmm. and the fact that I'm processing through all of these triggers and pains, it all exists in this complex complex individual that God ultimately loves. And he's just waiting on us to realize that our love for ourselves should be, you know, inevitable as well. That is our journey. Yes. That is our journey. So how do we, <laughs> how do we get people to get to that point? What would you say to someone who especially to men, mm-hmm. you know, I, I want to make sure that men feel like, you know, they're heard and that they can be addressed. Yeah. Um, what would you say? Because you can spend, if you live to be 80 years old, you can spend your life up until 65. Yeah going for the gold and it's all about your, you know, making sure the money is there, the ego is being fed and all of that. And then 15, you know, the next 15 years, you're just, you know, you're too weak. Like you're, you can't even enjoy. Yeah. Because you haven't, you haven't built it in in the years where you had, when when you had strength. That, That would be the first thing I would, I would speak to men. I would, I would say, consider where you are in life right now. And and know that um, you won't always be here. And so the values that you establish now, the things Steve Jobs said this about Apple. He said, we are great, not because of the things we say yes to, but because of the things we say no to. Mm. When everybody was popping off with big phones, small phones, I'm talking old classic Apple, right? Big phones, small phones, this, that. He said, we got one iPhone. We're going to do everything we can do to make this the best product ever. We're not going to go here. We're not going to go there. We got one iPhone. You're, gonna, you're not going to want another phone. You're going to want this iPhone, and that's it. There's no number two. There's no big one, small one, flip one, you know, one iPhone. And I, th- I believe that's a perfect model for us to live by. You only have one body. You only have one mind. You only have one, one soul, and that only has a certain time and in that time you have to decide what you value and what you're willing to say no to so that you can say yes to all these other beautiful things Mm -hmm. and that is what i'll say to men it it comes in 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 rhythms it comes choosing every day yeah 
But there is a being bigger than all of us that loves you regardless. So so get past that. Just know that one no after another no is how you become the best version of you. Mm. One no after another no is how you become the best version for the world to see. And so, yeah. And those no's can include saying no to that woman that is trying to knock down your door and you already married or all of that all of that it it it, it's it's no to it's no to those things that you know have an expiration anyway mm. like are you going to grow up today are you going to grow up when you're 65 are you going to grow if you grow up today and make those choices today there's so much life to enjoy in that space but the longer you take To find this better version of you, the shorter you have to enjoy it. Mm. That's just the truth. Gosh, that's so powerful. So get to get to the issues, the stuff that's standing in the way. Yeah, I would face the mirror. I would I would throw a couple of expletives if we were in another Ah! grade of just so you know it's the same. (laughs) It it doesn't change. Like Clubbing every night, woman after woman, idea after idea, like it has an expiration. Some Mm -hmm. of you have already gotten to that expiration. We're not even talking spiritual. We ain't even talking church. You just know it's the same weave. It's the same makeup. It's the same situation. It's the same tight dress. Mm-hmm. It's, but there's nothing. They don't know you. You don't know them. And that's just one aspect of it. Like, you can't even make strong business decisions because you're wondering if you went too far with a female two nights ago. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. it's just how we expand our lives. So that's my discussion to men. Yeah. And, um, and if you choose not to do it today, we still love you. You know? Yeah. Keep popping. Just know that that's one day less for you to be the best version of who you are. That's beautiful. That's powerful right there. That's really powerful. You know, it's it's like this clothespin for me. Um, when I saw it, I it reminded me of home, Jacksonville, Florida, Duval County, right? Duval! <laughs> Wherever you go, you're going to hear it. Um, it reminded me of uh, the hurts and the pains, uh, feeling like I wasn't seen. And when I was seen, I was taken advantage of. Um my scars are from just um, feeling invisible and needing to overcompensate that with a talent, with a gift, with mm-hmm. the ability to be seen, right? And so that then creates um, an opportunity for income and success and growth. And those scars don't leave. They just maturate along with the rest of your life yeah they become a part of your story and just because you you know hint at them it doesn't mean you're dealing with them and so that's where that's where i am you know um just honestly confessing that those um that history of my life has affected me um Mm -hmm. i don't have a judgment one way or the other i just know that it has created in me um, those wounds, you know, yeah. um, and and sometimes scars, um, they they they're beautiful because they remind you of where the wound was. But then there are some scars that are still wounds that are still there. So when you say that you've had us, you've had you felt taken advantage sure. of or different, like what were those scars? Like what are those things that? you know, that are still with you today? You know, um, feeling like you're good for one thing and that one thing is for another person's benefit without being considered. I can take that concept of molestation and um, address it in my career as a singer. Um, Then... So are you saying that was... That molestation was one of your scars? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, mm-hmm. Years. Multiple. And it was a culture. Um, and so it is, the, it is the idea that you are a tool to a person's satisfaction. So how do I take the power back? I become a tool for everybody's satisfaction. Um, and so in that... Um, 
how do I, how do I, you know, take my scars with me? That's how you, as a man, you make a brand out of your pain where it, and, and then you tend to let the success of that brand determine the value of who you are without ever dealing with the pain that it was. I think at this table I've dealt with, or I am dealing with, I'm seeing a part of that pain that I had not seen before. And and it is the reality that what happened to me as a child um, had nothing to do with me. It had nothing to do mm-hmm. with my size. You know, I've been chunky all my life. I probably, I've lost a little, you know, just to kind of make the muscles pop. Um, but <laughs> that uh, wasn't because of that. It wasn't because... I was unattractive. It wasn't because I wasn't important. It was because of the person's pain and their addiction and their issue. And it wasn't until I just kind of thought in talking to you to consider that that may be one of the first. I I go to a therapist, right? We just hadn't gotten to that chapter yet. Mm -hmm. So... That would, I mean, there's a lot of present day issues with me (laughs) instead of going all the way back, you know, to the past. But Mm -hmm. if I was to give it a, if I was to give it language, it would be that language. Yeah. Wow. Did I answer your question? Yes. Okay. Wow. So if, if, is that one of the reasons why if a woman comes up to you and she has all these amazing things to say, about you as an artist and saying, oh, I know you because I heard all your music. Mm -hmm. Is that just a way for you to say, it it, it feels like it would almost kind of feel like, well, like cheap and annoying in a certain way because Mm -hmm. there's so much stuff. Mm -hmm. Like you're like, you're seeing the world that I created. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing the truth of who I am. Uh, Yes and no. Because when when she says it, it is her world that I've just stepped into. Mm -hmm. And so stepping into her world and being good at being the tool for somebody else's satisfaction. I've had good practice, remember? Yeah. So I know how to disregard me. And become what she needs to be satisfied by me in that moment, musically. So it is it is that history has made that move innate. Yeah. It's become a part of so it would take somebody um to say, no, 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 no. I don't wanna know what you do for me. I wanna know what you need. And even still, after you say that, that's cute. But you yeah. got to be patient enough mm-hmm. because I, I'm going to always go back to what I'm innately amazing at, which is being a tool. Yeah. Um, so that's how I cover those scars. And that's how, you know, a lot of people cover those yeah. scars with being a with being a hero to somebody yeah. else. They're, they're used to being that. And so they never really deal with who they are and what they need. Most people, most people in my shoes, they don't know what they need. Like are, are completely oblivious. They'll see something. Oh, that's that looks good. I think I like that. But what do you really need? Like to know that you need rest, to know that you need breakfast, to to know that you need a massage, to know that you need somebody to say you don't have to do this. Most wow. of us don't know that stuff. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> This is interesting because I get it. That makes a lot of sense when you're so this this would apply to the athlete who's, you know, he's as long as you're performing well. Yeah. Like, you know, like you're an entertainer, but even if it's a doctor, all right, you you had a, all these surgeries and you all these patients are doing okay, you got wow. Yeah. So how do you then tap into yourself and your own needs if you're so if you're conditioned to ignore mm. yourself? I don't think you want to hear the answer. The answer is 
I'll say it this way. We like the mountaintop. It's beautiful up there, snow-capped mountains. You get to see everywhere. But vegetation never happens in the mountain. Vegetation only happens in the valley. Things only grow when storms come. How do you see you? You only see you when there's nothing else to substitute. Wow. Nothing else is working. Your games and your tricks, they don't work no more. Usually that happens at the end of a person's life when they're done magic tricking, you know? But it's in the valley. It's when you wow. remove either voluntarily or involuntarily the substitutions that are in our lives, the overcompensations that are in our lives. That's when we find the real us. And honestly, that's when we find the key mm. to the most authentic self, to our most authentic self as well. Wow. That's huge. And... I would imagine people would need assistance in mm. that mm -hmm. because you're not, it's kind of like going to the gym. And these, at least for me, some people are great at just saying, okay, I'm going to go hard mm -hmm. right. and I'm going to, you know, I'm going to sweat it out. I'm going to push myself. And then if you're like me, you're like, um, look, I'm going to just lift a couple of these things no. and I'm out of here. I'm not in the business of hurting myself. Yeah, exactly. I've been hurt enough. Yeah. So you kind of need some assistance in that because what you said is that you can do it voluntarily or it can happen, you know, kind of against your will, so to speak. Yeah. And so I would, you know, imagine people are like, look, I don't want to sign up for it, but I'd rather sign up for it than have somebody put my name on the list. Yeah. Yeah. So... It sounds to me you mentioned therapy. Is that a way for them to That's sign up for That's one of the ways. It? That's one of the ways. Again, there's no substitute for when you are ready. It's almost like a man in marriage. You know, there can be a perfect woman for him in front of him. But if he is not ready to connect with that perfect woman, she can look like the worst addition to his life because he doesn't have any room to take her in, receive her. And you would think they're incompatible when he's just selfish. And selfish, not because he values himself, selfish because, he, because he's protecting himself. Um, Selfish because he's afraid to let go and he doesn't know to trust her with empty him. Empty him, not fool him, not not the him that's that can that can save the day, not the him that can that's got the cape, not the him that's providing, but the him that has nothing. The him that's enough as he is. As he is. And that goes back to what we well, that goes to the spiritual elements of I am that I am. Mm -hmm. You are enough as you are. You are incredible because as I you am. are. Just because of Because here. of, yes, just because of you. Yeah. And I, I personally feel like that is the hardest part. and that, But that's the lesson that I know that I've had to learn and I'm still learning for myself is that at the end of the day, it's just you. It's your yeah. battle against yourself. Yeah. It's your battle against, you know, people, you know, the world. I always had this um, vision. There was a, I don't even know which uh, Superman movie it was. It's fine. I know you're having a good time with I the clothes. Just, you just broke, it. just broke it. See? Well, that's fine. I look at that as you like breaking through some things. Superman. Okay, See? Girl. That was you mean. Exactly. Surprise. Superman. Please continue. So... And there was this, I don't even remember which Superman it was, but I just remember there was, he was like in the, the ice cave, ice castle. Yeah. 
Like this is the one back in the day. Yeah, yeah. With, with Richard Pryor yeah. was it maybe with the uh, yeah that would be Superman three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so I just remember all of the stuff falling on top of him, like mm. every like it it collapsed. Yeah. And then you know you're like, oh my god, Superman is down for the count. He's out of there, man. What's going on? He needs some assistance. This voice is good. I know. Just like I feel going. like that's what, what the person was saying. Yeah. Assistance. Need some assistance. And so, and so, there was, he was weak, Mm. but he had to muster up Mm. the energy from just pulling it from every place in his being to rise up and shoot through, like, yeah, yeah, through the rubble. Yeah. I feel like that's just what it is for us because we were born, I feel like we're born and. We're beautiful, we're amazing, we're filled with potential, we're just so connected to God. And there's just purity, just in and we just are cool with ourselves. Yeah. We're good. And then the world starts to okay, you're too big, you're fat, you're skinny, you're too black, you're too white, you're too short, you're too tall, sure, you're not enough. Okay, you got to do it like this. Oh, you have to be like her. Oh, you have to be like him. And it's all these things. And you're like, it's too much. And so, unfortunately, once you have all that stuff piled on top of you, sometimes you just stay with it on top of you. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of like figure it out with the rubble on you. Yeah. I feel like there has to be a way for us to kind of gather up something the search within ourselves yeah because god is still in there is god is in there yeah and it's like okay we have to kind of pull ourselves up and shoot through all of this crap Mm -hmm. all of the stuff that they said about us all of the you're not enoughs all of the okay yeah love god Love other people, but you know, I don't know if you know, love yourself, whatever. Whatever. Like it has to be like I love myself enough to be whole. Sometimes that only comes through the rubble though. And that's okay yeah. because we all have rubble. That's my yeah. thing. It's like we have everybody has scars. But not everybody is doing the work. The work to to move through. And not yeah. saying that they don't want to or haven't tried. But I'm just saying, getting to a space where we're loving ourselves enough to love ourselves. Like, we can't, we think about ourselves enough to love ourselves. Yeah. We love ourselves enough to listen to ourselves and what we need. And I don't feel like that saying, oh, you know, I'm not. Because um, sometimes I feel like there's a, an element of well, I feel like I'm doing what God wants me to do. <laughs> yeah. And you but you you and you separate that from yeah. you know the things that you feel within yourself because I'm like, well, were you not then given those things to do? Yeah. Like those desires that you have in your heart were given to you, they're there for a reason. Yeah. So I just, you know, I I just want to really, that's one of the reasons I'm like, I want this. Sh- we're, we're here talking about this is because I think it's not so much about people not being able to move through the rubble. Yeah. I think it's more about am I worth the effort? I think the first hearing you talk, I really, I really considered something that. I think it's beautiful in what you said. Um, When we're able to consider ourselves worth it, naked, without doing a thing, without giving ourselves a job, I think from us finding our value and our being then from that surplus, we're able to do things um, that are then um, positively building the rest of our lives. But if we don't 
address the core of our existence outside of duty, yes, outside of doing, yes, then we'll always have a a substitute, something mm-hmm. to rely to on to up. define us by. Yes. And I think that's the key to us. What does loving yourself look like? If you weren't doing what you're doing, do you see yourself enough to want to take care of yourself? And in that core, the rest of our lives, and that's that's a lot easier to say than to do, but it is still what to do. Yes. Wow. It is still what to do. And I heard that from what you were saying. It was good. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Well, Thank you. Thank you for being so open. And I truly believe that this can connect. And that's just the idea is that let's just connect the dots, you know, because we're worthy. We're worthy of connecting the dots. We're worthy of putting forth the energy and effort. So where can people... How can people connect with you and find you and come and see you and experience sure. you? I want to say, first of all, that I think my voice sounds really sexy on this microphone. just want to say that, first of all. Well, I just want to say, that, dang, my voice doesn't sound as sexy. It does not. It does. Dang it. No. Wait. It sounds pretty I just, dry. I just, okay. You know what? But I'll they, just let you have it. It's fine. But they can contact me. Leon Timbo Love.com. Leon Timbo Love.com. And, um, Leon Timbo and me dot com. It's uh, it's an initi- it's an, an initiative that I'm that I've started. I have about uh, between sixty and seventy people, creatives, where I get a chance to kind of partner with them and walk with them into the successes of life. And I think from this conversation, I'm going to add just a bit of self awareness. You know, um, I think that's what I've grown from our talk. So that means a lot to me. Thank you wow. for enlightening me. Thank you. Yeah. And how can I find you on social media? Everything is Leon Timbo. It's just me, uh, Leon Timbo, Facebook, Instagram, that thing. And, um, yeah, that's L-E-O-N-T-I-M-B-O. It's country. It's a nickname of a nickname. Okay. Yeah, my my dad was a preacher. Okay. And uh, his name is Leon as well. But because the old ladies like the Bible, there was a... Uh, young guy in the Bible called Timothy. He even had two books. Mm -hmm. So they would call him Timothy because he was short and young. And I am Tim's boy. Timbo. Wow. You're welcome. Gosh. Of all of the things that we talked about. You're so welcome. I think that was the most enlightening. (laughs) That I'm that country. Yes. Absolutely. Like I had no idea where that came from. Yep. Sweet tea, collard greens, Tim's boy. There you go. Wow. Close pins. You, then, you know what? You can just, I think you can just drop, you can just drop the close pin like, up, uh, and I'm out. And I'm out. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. We did.